Within the passageways of one department at the University of Regina, a fellowship of three researchers are trying to map out the mysteries of a higher plane in the world of theoretical math. Professor Douglas Fernick says the path to finding answers requires a step into a larger, complex world in order to perform a task. And then you go back down to that smaller world where you want the answer to be. It's, uh, it's the analog of the quadratic equation for cubic equations. You have to go from the real number system to the complex number system do some work in the complex number system, and the answer is back in the real number system. He says those who study math already know the secrets of the complex number system, allowing them to use it for many things. With colleagues Martin Arjarami and Pedro Massi, he ventures into a more sophisticated algebraic system called the injective envelope of a C-star algebra. Other than knowing that it exists, we don't know very much about it, so we're trying to describe it very precisely. What leads one to study the science of mathematics? Professor Martin Arjarami explains. People usually become mathematicians just because they like math. It's usually more ambition than that, it's just passion. But, but then you learn how much, it's, you learn that it's much bigger than what you think. You like some equations in high school, you know, that has almost nothing to do with math. You know, that is way, way bigger than that. So what is required to enter this field beyond the advanced skills of problem solving? Imagination because you have to think of things that haven't been done yet and you have to have a certain sense of daring to follow up on your things that you're imagining. You will never get anywhere if you just try to obey the rules initially. You just will not get anywhere.